Good morning and welcome to this, our service of worship for Sunday the 18th of April. As we proceed, we do of course remember the events of yesterday and that although we have come to the end of our official period of national mourning, we continue to keep the Queen and all her family in our prayers. Her steadfast commitment to service of this country has been of untold blessing. We ask for her sake that God, on whom she has relied in her role, would be close to her now in her sorrow and comfort her in her grief. In such a time of lament, though, we must acknowledge the reality of the pain. It is most appropriate that we remember that we still are in the season of Easter. This season, above all, allows us to see how our expressions of trust in God, our requests for help and our praise of God's name will not go unheeded. As Peter says in our reading today, Jesus is the author of life, whom God raised from the dead, and in his name there is healing from affliction and sorrow. So, Father, we ask that you would continue to inspire us with the vision of your kingdom and the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Help us always to look for you, to seek you, and to trust you in all things. Amen. The Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are truly sorry and repent have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and for ever. Amen. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets and his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving, and while still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Thanks be to God. In our readings at this season, we hear of the resurrection stories from the Gospels, of Jesus meeting with his disciples. And then, in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we hear the tales of the early church. We see the effect of the resurrection on the lives of Jesus' followers. But of course, the two don't come together. I think that in the early days after the resurrection, the disciples would have been bewildered and confused, as well as surprised and delighted. It must have taken them a while to get their heads around the reality of Jesus alive and amongst them again. Time and again when Jesus appears, the first thing he has to say is, Peace be with you, in order to calm their shattered nerves and anxieties as they grappled with a hitherto unexpected and unexperienced event. By the time we read of the activities of the church in the book of Acts, the followers of Jesus are living in the knowledge of the resurrection and experiencing its power for themselves. In this passage, Peter is speaking just after he has spoken healing in the name of Jesus to the man at the gate, Beautiful. And the man has gone with Peter and John, walking and leaping and praising God into the temple. As a cripple, that man would not have been allowed into the inner temple precincts. Now, as a man made whole, he can enter more fully into the worship of the community. Not very PC, but something that if we understand the lengths of the exclusion of the disabled from the worshipping community, so we can more fully appreciate the delight of being able to go right in to the heart of the matter. I've been speaking with a few people this week. Well, I always do speak with a few people, but anyway, uh, particularly this week, as we've enjoyed the greater freedom of going out and about, as we see Bridge North High Street open and busy again. We are, of course, delighted at the release from lockdown regulations, 
to be able to sit and have a pint with people face to face, to see, to talk, to be able to handle clothes and to buy new stuff, or at least to put it down again. At the same time, there's a trepidation in many of our minds. Is it safe? Do we really want to mix with other people? Is it really wise to go out for a drink? There's both joy and anxiety in exploring and adapting yet again to a new situation. If adaptation is the key to the survival of the fittest, then our fitness levels are certainly pretty high after this last year. Every few weeks brings another requirement to adapt. Anyway, perhaps we can find strength and hope in recognising that the first disciples faced a similar challenge as they came to terms with the fact of the resurrected living Jesus. They took time over those early encounters, time for conversation and for eating together. Just remember when it says they gave him a piece of broiled fish, it wasn't a matter of looking for leftovers in the fridge. Someone would have had to go out and source the fish and to prepare it and broil it. It might have taken an hour or so just to offer even the most simple meal together. And whilst they were waiting for presumably the women to do the work, the disciples would have had some questions to ask and Jesus would have had some things to say. We're told only the very briefest condensation of the conversation of these encounters. As in any of the other stories of the resurrection, the disciples on the Emmaus Road, Mary at the tomb. We read these stories in a couple of minutes, but within them there would be time and space for coming to terms with the new reality. Jesus' presence with the disciples brought peace, joy and hope back into their lives. And the followers of Jesus went on to live lives which transformed the world around them. As followers of Christ today, as those who live with the knowledge of the resurrection, we are asked to carry the fragrance of Jesus, which St Paul says. We offer peace, joy and hope to the world around us. Let us look to Jesus who puts his faith in us. Spend time with him. And by prayer and walking with God each day, offer to those around us who are anxious and struggling again to adapt, offering them peace, hope and the love of God to sustain them and all of us in this new normal of our resurrection life. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. 
May God be glorified now as we commit ourselves to the work of prayer, interceding for those in all kinds of need. In our worship and our openness to the spirit of life, in the church's longing and outreach, in the priests, the people, in all seekers and honest doubters. In all this, may God be glorified. The continuing presence of God as Holy Spirit leads us, as Jesus promised, into a personally guided outreach to all nations. In the welfare programmes and peacemaking missions, in the struggle to uphold justice, in the aid given to the hungry and homeless. In all this, may God be glorified. Lord God, as members of your church in this generation, we ask your guidance and blessing for all our deacons, priests and bishops and all in training for lay and ordained ministries. As the people of God, we ask for the gifts we need for the work that you need us to do. In all this, may God be glorified. In the loving and costly commitment of mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, daughters and sons, in the determination to forgive in all the lives shared and cherished, in the work of nursing, comforting and healing, in the daily patient struggle with pain and weakness and in the practical, good-humoured caring. In all this, May God be glorified. Lord God, may our homes be centres of love, acceptance and welcome. We pray that you will make your home among us in each room and in each relationship. Lord God, we pray for your strength and protection against all hypocrisy and double standards in our society. We pray for a spirit of genuine service among all who lead and in all areas where we have authority. In all this, may God be glorified. Lord God, we pray that you will make our homes and our relationships places where people know by the way we look at them and treat them, that they are valued, cherished and respected for who they are. Walk with us in our life journeys, guiding, teaching and correcting us as we learn the lessons of loving in our homes, our work and our communities. In all this, may God be glorified. Walk with us, Lord, through the times of suffering and pain, alerting us to one another's needs and providing for us in whatever ways are best for us. Help us to trust you through the dark times. Breathe new life and hope into those who are close to despair. In all this, may God be glorified. Walk with us, Lord, through the valley of death. May our love and prayers support those who walk that journey today. Draw close to them and welcome them into the joy of heaven. In all this, may God be glorified. Lord, we thank you for walking with us wherever we travel. We thank you that you are indeed real, 
and alive every step of the way. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today for this service of worship. We pray that you are blessed in the week ahead and see the presence of the resurrected Jesus with you in all that you do and say and among all whom you meet. Once again, as we heard this morning, it is not through our own power or piety that we accomplish what God has asked of us, nor the miracles that attend us when we speak truth and healing in the name of Jesus, but our faithfulness to Jesus will allow Jesus to work through us as he is with us always. So now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive by the power that is at work among us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.